Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Spin Rack. I'm here with my boy, Petey himself. Say what's up, Petey. What's going on? Hey, so talking about the top movie in America right now, the Marvels itself. Huh. Petey, what was your take on the movie? What did you think about it? Well, I am sad that it seems like the turnout is not going to be that immense for this. And I want to get into that later. But as far as movies goes, it started right into the action. A little bit like the way the trailer is, but it started like you had a little bit of moments. And as soon as the, the, the tiny bit of setup is there with the villain, the action starts and the heroes go to their thing that we see the trailer where they're switching their their move teleporting in each other's place which is kind of a throwback to the way rick jones and captain marvel used to hit the bands the nega bands and they would switch places but that was a plan this one they don't know it at this point so they're doing that and these three are somehow connected i guess it's from the same energy because it's all Cree related so um even though the the bangle seemingly was supposed to be a part of the clandestine. It seems that we were working with the Kree stuff, right? So ultimately, it was that was that all that stuff was very much fun. They got a little more emotional stuff, which you know was going to happen in this thing because you get the meeting between Monica and Carol and the stuff that I had forgotten about that um, Monica's mother passed, and that's you know told in the Scarlet Witch thing where they had. Monica had went through the blip, so there was a tiny bit of blip stuff in here, but um, you don't like that. <laughs> no, I can't deal with them talking about the blip at all. So then, um, you know, we had uh, we had the key of what happened. Like most movies, whatever was your thing that you did in the last one becomes the thing that that weighed over your head since you just kind of destroyed the Kree Empire. Now she's seen she's seen as the villain to them. And that's where we get the, the the gray area, which is like now she's kind of the bad guy and she has this weight on her, which was something I didn't necessarily like too much. Um, I didn't like one of the plans they went to, but the movie still kind of moved along and was fun. It has some wacky kind of James Gunn type stuff with the cats, but at this at the end, it ended kind of um, it ended kind of. I think they, they could have upped the ante with the ending, but I think they did it to kind of add to your emotional emotional thing, which I don't think necessarily worked. I think her saying, I can't leave, kind of set it up. But most of the time with a good, I'm not, you know, this character's loss, you kind of do something to trick the audience. And that's where you, so the, in the Wrath of Khan, they did it with Spock. You kind of have the audience forget what's happening and think that it's going to be better after this. So um ultimately i liked it i had fun in it um and i uh, just wish the audience was out there to go see it too you can give spoilers you don't have to hide behind say what it is what i mean whatever you know the singing the singing part i, I didn't like the singing no, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about like, you, you didn't give reason what they called her in the show i said that she the thing that happened in the, her destroying the kree empire she became called the annihilator because she Put them in dismay and somehow that destroyed their atmosphere and then they're taking atmosphere from other people so most of the time because that's kind of residual effects from from the wrath of khan it's like i don't know like jaws jaws 2 wasn't like a revenge movie or the indiana jones and the temple of doom wasn't a revenge story i think we've since the wrath of khan because i watched it like the other day and i was like Hey, a lot of movies do. When you get to the second one, there's a revenge, like Superman 2 had a revenge aspect of these criminals. So it's like that's the kind of thing that kind of goes through your thread. And Hollywood movies have so much revenge in it already. I'm kind of, you know, being watching movies for most of my life, I'm kind of tired of seeing the revenge plot. I'd rather see, here's just another story. So another, where the creek could be bad. I didn't like that the, the scrolls have been moved to another planet, and we got these nice guy scrolls. We need some bad scrolls, some evil that hate <laughs> that hate being nice. Like that's the other thing. They weren't just bad guys. They hate. They they were like like the they were like um not the Klingons because the Klingons they talk about the honor too much. They just dislike, huh? Like the Cardassians. 
<laughs> you talking about the Star Trek ones, <laughs> but then with the they kind of they kind of just enjoyed being bad, and when they had someone that was kind of for you know peace, those were the people that were the bad guys in their mind. They were like the person who tried to be a negotiator and peaceful. Those are like their heretics. They're the ones that they hated. Like they hated more than anyone else. Anyone who tried to bring them together, type of deal. So, uh -huh. and, and, and that's that is a a key question. I mean, are the Cree good or bad? And by you answering that, I kind of I agree with you one hundred percent. You know, the the Cree and the Skrull are bad because yeah, both, that's what I wanted. Totally and, bad. Yeah, which I agree. And I think they it's just that they come from different points of view. Whereas the Skrulls are always using like the shape shifting and to get into people and, 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 to, and to take over, you have the, the Kree is like, yo, we wiping you out. You, we, we taking you over. There's no question. And the fact that they have the supreme intelligence to help them do it. You know, people were like, oh, the supreme intelligence are, is, is controlling the Kree. I sometimes think that they're, they're in accord with the Kree. You know what I'm trying to say? The supreme intelligence reflects what the Kree, yes. what the Kree want, yeah. basically, as opposed okay. to, you know, you remove it, it's not changing anything. You still have the, uh, the you know, that's my thing. And, and okay. I don't know if I got that right or not. No, it's not about the thing of it is like the aspect of the supreme intelligent isn't trying to say here, they try to say this is an AI that was running things and we couldn't run it without stuff. No, the supreme intelligence is just cool. Ronan the accuser is just cool. Like you don't destroy these things because it was just the wackiest, it's a more alien aspect to instead of these humanoid people running around. So that's what was cool about them. Having her just having her having him maybe mess up the but I think in the Kree Skull War, like Rick Jones just passes by the Supreme Intelligence. It doesn't he doesn't you don't actually destroy that. And that in the movie they're like, well, what are we here for? We got to do something to the Supreme Supreme Intelligence. Like, don't it's too cool for her to then the you know having you know instead of uh, regretfully you'd have a, a terrible. Kamala Khan scene where she was like, oh, the Supreme Intelligence, cool. I read about it in my highlights mag. Like, they, no, the Supreme Intelligence, Nick Fury is not going to be someone you know. That's the part I don't like is that all the Avengers of information is out there. Nick Fury, people have the action figure. Where we shouldn't know who Nick Fury is. Like, he might be a war hero that someone who's a historian would remember, but no one should know Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So we'll get back more in depth in that, but just to tie up the knots with the, the whole Kree and stuff like that. The very fact that she becomes the annihilator because she destroys the Supreme Intelligence, and then they get into a whole civil war, and then they decide to destroy their son. I mean, that's the thing that gets me, like, you guys are trying to take control, and someone says, hey, I have a great idea. I'm going to use the son to stop my enemies or something. Like, mm -hmm. yo, I mean, you got the, there are red lines. That's not a friggin' line. That's like a friggin' block, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you talking about? And you're right. The whole fact that they got rid of the supreme intelligence, so now the Kree's don't have one. And now you have they got rid of um, um, the uh, the um, Ronin, and they now they've gotten rid of Darben. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, yeah, yeah. Marvel keeps no villains. What's they the won't. They There's can't, no going back. They can't. They they they're following the you know the what was it the what's that thing. The the Batman 989 where they killed the Joker, which I was like, why are you killing the Joker? Like, why do we need this ending where we see him and then he fights a new villain every time? Where it's just like we did the penultimate one because that's the other thing. When it comes to the straights being the normal people, they have a heart. Like I think Mason came with talking about Superman is like they've been like four Supermen, and it's just like <laughs> and like no, you're supposed to think of it. Just the each the same Superman, and that's where the straights have a hard time. Where you gotta crack their skulls and say, "All right, no, you want to be able to have, you know, you have someone cool. You want to have them come back again and again." And that's whereas most movies, the person I just watched a movie and they kill everybody, and the next thing you know, it's over. Where it's like, but uh, you know, it's uh, I, that, I hear you on that. That's the thing. You have something as cool as Supreme Intelligence. Ronin, when they were saying Ronin was gone forever, I was like, what? Is he? I can't remember that he died totally, but it's just like, they just won't, yeah, they, it's a sad thing that they're more interested in having the, the strife between the people and then them solve it and kill the villain gets destroyed, the same, like they get blown out the water. So that bodes, 
No, actually, you'll get running once they because once we, we so you're saying we're going, you don't want to get to the end part yet. So go on. So, so I mean, so just to tie, so just to go back to the beginning now, we're basically saying the whole reason this dark band comes around and she gets one of the mega bands is that she's trying to get the resources for a planet. But the twist is, is that she's stealing resources from planets that Captain Marvel is associated with. Yeah. So it's like, I'm sticking it to you, Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing. When that's what, that's what happened in, uh, in uh, what's that thing? In uh, the Wrath of Khan. It's like, he said, I'm going to take things from you that just because you wish. It's like, no, you got to come back to here, Khan. You got to come back. It's like, I've already hurt you. I've <laughs> So the happy yeah, so aspect to them, which I think um, it just, but every movie has revenge in it. So especially if you see a basic action movie, you know, I'm sorry to say the killer that has your revenge aspect to it. So anyway, um, they, don't, they, they don't believe in, you don't have in, in Marvel is like every action causes another action. Right. And so that action causes is Darth Ben evil per se. Or is she just reacting to what happened to Captain Marvel? I mean, you and I would say she's inherently evil because of the things she's doing, right? You can be you can be pissed off at Captain Marvel for what she did and go after Captain Marvel, but then when you say we're going to destroy all these other planets, in the in just to prove a point, it's wrong, right? If you want to sell action figures, yeah, but they're destroying <laughs> the character, so you can't keep the action figure. If you're having a person that is like, hey, I'm doing this to get resources. And I'm, at the same time, I'm going to take from places with that Captain Marvel's connected to at the same time. But then, you know, when I go, oh, I love that she was great. I was like, all right, I'm going to get it, but she's dead. So how did the kids play with that outside of the collector? So well, they brought Loki back. They like Loki. So I guess they can always bring. And interesting connection. She is the fiance to the actor. Who plays Loki. Yes, yes. I just uh, it's funny that I was in the theater and the guy in there said said that to me. He said that's Loki's wife. So yeah. <laughs> um so let's get back to the to the core of this, the Marvels. Did they work or did they not? You know, I'm a I'm a huge fan of um of Ms. Marvel. I think she's fantastic. I love her exuberance on screen. You know, you really oh, believe it. I like her. On. I liked her from her TV show. Come on. I like... Um, What's the difference between her, Spider-Man, It's Spider-Man. The she's, Hawkeye. They literally, they literally Hawkeye. said they, they, might, they put her on... It was based on the Spider-Man um, from No Way Home or Far From Home, whatever. Based on that Spider-Man. They, that was so successful, they thought they would have somebody. But that she, was not that successful for them. It it ticked up a little more than Amazing Spider Man too, but I it, liked her. I think she's great. I oh, think she does. No, a they gave job. us the same character as Spider Man, oh. as uh, well her and Hawkeye, the little Hawkeye, you know, of, of Hawk, Hawk Girl. Like like she, they're all this wide eyed. Wow, wow! Like it's trying to give us the 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 aspect of whereas Peter Parker was someone who as, as Spider Man was cynical. So he would get outside of some things, he would first do a quip or something like that. Yeah, he did. But they wouldn't, they had him going, Mr. Such and Such, where it's just like, oh, hey, I'm Spider-Man. Uh, like, come on, this is not how Spider-Man reacts. Like, I think the audience loves her, and I think she's going to go far. Her character is going to be, in fact, she's building her own team. Remember at the very end scene? I'm telling you guys. Dude, you to... they're trying to sell somebody that they already know doesn't sell. She sells. What are you no, talking she about? No, she was the, lo the lowest selling TV show that they had. I think they, it's going to change. They're, audience, bank audience, they're audience banking on come. someone, and this is what they, I think they did wrong in the marketing of it. They sold you saying that, hey, you guys don't like, even though Brie Larson was doing commercials and she got a new tv show it's like we're selling you ms marvel which nobody knows and people will watch that show the least i disagree i think that those but i'm saying those who do know it i think you're right the mark the, the sales you want the uh, most of the, the brie lawson of course that's what people were familiar with but kamala khan i think they needed to i think you're going to find out that she's going to come out the breakup star the breakout stars time goes on. they're going to try their best to make her into the breakout star but she's not i'm sorry and the other issue is Captain Monica Rambo. Like, is she, what is her name? I mean, should we call her Captain Marvel again? Captain Marvel, Spectrum, Photon? 
in the comics, she's been called all kinds of stuff. And so well, she's been called all terrible names, Pulsar and Spectrum. Like when I when I was thinking about doing her character as a solo story, even though they have another character named that by now, I thought she'd just, just be Starlight, right? Because she used to turn into light. So yes. when you get into Captain Marvel, what they try to do is they always do the performance anxiety superheroes. And Captain Marvel was not a performance anxiety hero. When she touches the thing, like the interface in the comic books, similar to how she did in the WandaVision, she immediately gets, because she, no, she actually tries to destroy it because it's going to destroy the harbor. So she tries to destroy it, and that makes all the energy go to her. And then she immediately goes from here to like a miles away at light speed. So immediately, and then at the same time, there's some things that just happen. So like, oh, I'm at a radio. And then she touches this thing, but it has no cord at the end. It's not connected to anything. But her abilities, which she doesn't know how to use, re reignite it. And then at the same time, she slowly starts to figure this out immediately, all her powers. And since what's name's a science, the other one was a cop. This one is a scientist. She's like, I got to fly. I don't know how to fly and go through all that stuff. Whereas she, the light speed aspect is what, not just her turning into energy and turning until she can pass through stuff. The light speed is something that could have been so cool in this. I was thinking the same thing too, though. They didn't usually lose the light speed stuff. So, I mean, she can go almost anywhere, but you know, look, I think that I liked all three of them. I mean, I wasn't going to be, I, I, I wasn't going to, I didn't think I was going to end up liking it as much. Those three working together as much. I like their relationship and how they, they they got it. But again, I always go back to the whole thing of, you know, theoretically, Brie Lawson should have gotten her own show, right? As opposed to a, been a, a whole... No, movie. I'll correct you. This Spider-Man has had three movies, right? Both Black Panther and Captain Marvel pushed back for Spider-Man. They both were supposed to be done sooner and... Captain Marvel was supposed to be done before Wonder Woman. They right. pushed all of that back, right? But at the same time, if you think about it, they let Spider-Man skip the other movies, right? Because we got three Spider-Man movies, right? And it came, it was Spider-Man went first, but at the same time, we got those before we got to the set, like after Spider-Man 2, we should have got Black Panther and then the Marvels. We got another Spider-Man before we got to another Black Panther, and well, that this is this the line. You can't even say that, Petey. That you got to remember, he passed away, so that kind of threw. A lot no, of that's uh, that's understandable. I'm saying, but then Captain Marvel should be next in line. Not mean okay now, Spider-Man next in line. That's what well, kind well, of Spider-Man is a whole different company. Sony, so Sony has their own considerations. They're willing to push their stuff. Now, combine. Now you saw the, the the Kamala Khan. Just want to take it to another thing. Did you think? So we, we've seen the Scarlet Witch show, and we've also seen the, the Kamala Khan. I thought this was probably one of the few shows that they've done, uh, movies that they've done a better connection, like, hey, um, Kamala Khan, she's from Jersey, boom, 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 there's power. Um, Monica Rambeau, she got her powers with the hex. We saw that there. But the part about, to me, those work well. But the part about um, Secret Invasion and Fury, I think that just fell flat. It's like there was no connection to that show it wasn't even the same fury, the station, the tone, everything was just completely different. And I'm like, what happened here? You know what I'm trying to say? Well, you're you're exactly right. The whole Cold War spy thing, and then now he's just everything's fine. Yeah. Like there's no there's no connection. Well, that leads to say that this is something that they've had. This probably should have came out before Secret Invasion. Yes. You know, this definitely should have came up before Secret Invasion. We see Fury, and then we find he comes back down to Earth, and then you get the whole story, right? But then they said, no, in, in my opinion, they switched it up. I can't, I, there's no way to know, but clearly he was still in space. And that would have made sense. He'd go down, and then he gets all the negative thing from all the other people saying, you've been up in space all that time. And that makes sense in terms of the Kree, because, I mean, the, the scroll, because... The whole purposes of 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 of, of, um, of secret invasion was that you promised us the planet to get a place to live, and you never gave it to us. But here you see, which doesn't make any sense, that they have a planet, they have, they're, they're there, and you're like, wait a second, that's not a million scrolls, right? There's supposed to be a million scrolls on Earth. There are not a million scrolls there. 
So what's going on? It's like the scrolls yeah. guy, if it will stay here in the in in in, in the in the world, or are these are the only ones willing to rough it. And if it's rough it, why are we calling this guy? Why are we calling this guy emperor? I mean, if you only got like thirty thousand people, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm the emperor of the of the scroll empire. <laughs> There's only ten of us. <laughs> I'm the I'm the I'm the emperor. You're the prime minister. You're the president. <laughs> you know, like yeah. what the hell is that? Yeah. You know. It's um, it's in the scroll scene. Well, I I think it might have played better. They had to be moved again. Then you get to Fury in this one. Maybe there have been more connection, but sales wise, it doesn't necessarily matter. But I think I don't know. Try to trying to no, because I probably had a lot of digital effects to do. So that probably would would push it back too. So it's but hard. You're, you're playing, you what you just said before is like this should have been ahead. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, look, this creed, this creed thing didn't work, right? You promised us a place and it didn't work. Now you can feel people pushing back. This is where we we're going to go, but now it's not working out. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's wild. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Well, we got to finish it, right? The thing that should have sold, the thing that should have sold this to the, to the rafters. All right. We're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. I wasn't going to talk about it, but. The dance sequence, the singing. You're people. talking about something else. Not the. I said the dance sequence was. I didn't. Wasn't too big. This. That's let's the, call. Let's call the elephant in the room. What the heck was there a dance sequence? You know, they they encountered a civilization. Course, okay. A civilization where Captain Marvel is, I guess, the princess bride or the uh, or the princess of the planet. And, that part I didn't mind. That part. And, the and the daughter, was that one. That was for some reason. I thought that was okay that there was a marriage, and maybe there's more to this thing because he he felt more like a submariner than the guy who was submariner. But women oh like oh my gosh, the women, <laughs> the women like the guy who plays submariner, so we can't really say too much about that. So, right, but I'm saying so here he is. I mean, in this civilization, they they sing talk, they sing to, in order to talk. And so her husband happens to be bilingual because because that's that what see, that's what sing, sold it for me. But he can talk. Or, he can talk yeah, regular. Yeah, so. yeah. That, was, that was okay with and, me. And you know what? I can get that. But the dance routine was like, what the heck? That kind of threw me for a loop. And, and, and you know what? Probably on the second viewing, it may be like, okay, probably this is just some little fun sequence. I get it, you know? But that kind of did not know what to, couldn't wrap my head around that when I was like, oh. It was just, it was kind of, as I said, it was kind of like a, I'd say the Kelvin Star Trek because it was like, in the second movie, they they run into some weird aliens that were like, you know, same way Star Trek used to do. They'd be humanoid aliens, but they just have some weird stuff going on. But they did kind of cynically get to that. So that, that's when it started off. Then when she, her, she was able to change into her, her costume, into a dress, that was kind of cool. So I was like, all right, I, I just went with it. I think mean, because <clears throat> ultimately, before um because before homecoming and before kamala khan disney had their own homecoming movies which i think were kind of the t in my opinion they were the template there were other things that are more the template for the spider-man thing but they had this framework but the only difference was was that the kids were kids that made mistakes and peter parker was a kid in these stories that didn't, you know, was so remorseful, did try, didn't want to make a mistake, trying to do the best thing, but do does does the wrong thing for the right reasons. The same with Kamala Khan, where it's like the kid, you know, when you look, I always go to Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. She was the person who was supposed to save the world, but she's like, nah, I'm going to Homecoming. <laughs> she just blows it off first. So that gets you your movie where everyone kind of quits type of deal. So, but uh, you know, ultimately that's the dance going to the dance sequence. That was a, a a holdover from Kamala Khan from these other shows that had dance sequences. The animated shows that have a dance sequence in the middle. So they tried to work in the dance sequence in there. You know, trying they're trying they're doing their best to try. They got animation with Kamala Khan in the beginning for the girls. They got a dance sequence for the girls and then possibly people from all over the world. And it's still people ain't show up. So well no, I, I you know what I'm gonna say to me, I'm gonna say it right now. 
the strike, right. I think, does have an effect on these type of things. I think the fact that they were not able to get out there and market the movie and do the rounds and let people know, you know, because not everybody's following it. I think this whole Marvel fatigue, I think it's just overblown. I think if you have a good story, a good show, people will come out. Spider-Man has shown this consistently that you can get a, a if you got a good script, you have surprises, people are going to come out to You're see it. you saying Spider-Man had a good script? Well, not a good script. I'm just saying that Spider-Man had a good show, and people like to come out to see that. And I think it could, it could bomb. It we supposedly the the, the Andrew um, Garfield ones didn't do well, but the fact that no, they was, they didn't do they weren't big. They they were okay. They were in. The, I thought they were okay, but I'm just saying the people it's all um, perception, and I think that the fact that they weren't out to go out, they weren't able to do it to to, to advertise. I think it would have done better. I I don't know how much better, but I think it would have done better. Um. But you know, the only thing we can say is, does it have legs? And next week we'll see more. But I think they're losing all their premium screens because other 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 movies are coming out. Once again, the doggone movie industry is just all these films are coming out. It's, you're going to be having Dune. You're going to have. Um, I mean, I'll tell you right now, movies coming up right now. Uh, Scarface is being re released um, next week. Um, you're going to have Hunger Games is coming out next week. So yeah, you but those re releases don't don't kill. Those re-releases definitely don't kill. I know, but Hunger Games, that's definitely going to take those those premium screens. You know, wow, Private Ryan is coming out again, too. That's, um, I didn't realize, the 25th anniversary. And it's a, the, the uh, what else? Napoleon is coming out on 22nd. So all the premium screens, that's where the money is nowadays, is going to be gone, basically. And so unless they can somehow turn it around and get more people to come in, I don't see how they're going to, how they're going to turn that, how they're going to make it, so. I mean that's just my point, my, my my point of view, and then you have, um, yeah, Novel Napoleon's coming out on the twenty second. You have Wish coming out on the twenty second. That's the Dis the big Disney movie. You have um, Hunger Games, Trolls Band together. I don't think that's gonna make a difference. I thought Doom was scared. I think well, I I just think this this doesn't. This means that Marvel, like Marvel's in a place where they're gonna be like. We don't. We're not doing female-led movies. We might do a Kamala Khan series for another thing, and t have her team up. But <clears throat> they also have a problem. Most of their characters for their team that she's putting together are going to be all girls, and that's they need for the the all girl story to work. But they have the new black Black Widow. They got the new. They got the Hawkeye girl. And then they're gonna who, add in the Hulkling for as a character, but it's gonna be mostly female characters. So they're gonna have to figure a way to make this work. But they the, their track record of taking Captain Marvel and putting it past when that should have been before um, should have been before uh, Infinity War. They were like, no, we put it after. Then at the same time, they took what's that thing, Black Widow, and they said before, they could have put it out before the pandemic, but they weren't really interested in having a movie if, because Scarlett Johansson, she was doing numbers in her her solo films. In my opinion, I felt like they didn't really want to have a thing where it was successful, and then the studio was like, well, why are we doing this with this new girl? Like, we need to do it with the actual character, this new girl, you don't know if the audience is going to come for that. Like you, you do a movie where you start with the, <laughs> the lead character and kill them and expect the audience to follow this new this new one with the same name. Oh, no, she got a white outfit. Oh, but the Black Widow has a white outfit, too. So it's like hard to say. So I think their effort in kind of with the buzz of the all female movies from Endgame, they I guess, as you said, it was definitely the strike that kind of hurt it. But they've been kind of distancing themselves from Brie before that, so and she's kind of been okay if they do that. So, but there's been there's, there's such a negative chatter by guys online about Brie Larson. They don't like her politics. They don't like what she does. They don't like her character. And to me, I think nowadays in movies are having there's so much people. There's more than just let's give the movie a chance. People are want to say, hey, for example, if Trump was in 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 Star Wars. People are like, oh. I'm not going to watch it. Or people want, hey, let's watch the movie and see if it's any good. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Automatically, people are just having, putting their political ideas, I think, without giving things a chance. Give it a chance, you know? And you'll see whether or not you end up liking it. And look, it, it also doesn't help that Marvel has gone so 
Um, they want to be, you know, they, they, they've tried to get so many female leads in for all these movies. They're trying to change things up a lot and it hasn't been as successful as they want, you know? And I think it's because they need to probably go back and, and, and be reminded of who their original audience is. If your original audience is going to totally hate something, I'm not saying not take chances, but you can't take a chance with everything you do. You know what I'm trying to well, say? Well, I think... I mean, you got to try keeping some things consistent. Next thing we're going to know, it's like, oh, you know, um, such and such character, we're making her female and she's smarter than Iron Man. Such and such character, we're, we're bringing her in and she's stronger than Thor. Oh, such and such character is now king. That's another thing. King of, I'm still yeah. back by calling someone king of Asgard. And she showed up in a suit. She's on a new Asgard and she's got a suit on. It's just like, yeah, I'm like, come on, what are you trying to say? I mean, what are you trying to push? These are the type of things that they, they need to like dial it back. Bro, and 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 let's. These and why of- is why is that? Sh- if anyone should be, you know, I understand. You decided that the person who played Sif isn't the character that should be ruling it, and you're backing this other chick because you want to have. You can't have Sif too close when Thor's around because Thor, obviously, his wife was Sif, but she. You want um, you know, what's the name um. You can't have her, but then just you know, replacing what's name? You put Valkyrie in there, which kind of hurts the character. Where Sif should be running it. The only problem is that then, then you know, Thor looked like he kicked Sif to the curb, you know, instead of being like you know. Someone then Sif should have turned out being the, the new king because she's been yeah. there. You know, she should have been the kick it to the curb or not. You know, yeah. look, I'm not saying don't give the character, but they've just changed so much. I mean, when you look at it, it's like, dude. So, all right, we're, we're finished with that part. Last part, let's talk about the end credits. And okay, credit. so there's we a big... One, we talked about one, we talked about the whole fact that Kamala Khan is going around raising her own team, right? Either it's going to be Young Avengers, you know, um, and you're right, the criticism you had is that if it's only going to be another all-female team, I don't know, again, you're not going to bring the guys in. And I, again, here, the, there's no real film, no real male lead. If you want to call Fury, Fury, Especially after what happened with the um, Secret Invasion, I don't think this has helped him. But I mean, he had to be in the movie. But I, the problems, I don't think enough cat people are, rec- are, are are being on top of that. Probably the 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 strike could have, if he would been able to market it, probably may have been different. Now the second thing is the big one was, and I'll let you describe it, sir. Go for it. You want me to say everything? All right. Yes, so, we're not we're not doing this crap about. Um, okay, but, so they finally they we finally got a hint. That the X Men are here. We f- see Monica in this, of course, another reality. And this other reality, she sees her mother, and her mother's there. And the what mother- happened to her? How did she get to the other reality? Got to explain. Going through the whole ending. So to save the rift that caught co- the rift between worlds that um the villain created, Monica can use her powers, and she's like, I can't stop. And Captain Marvel tried to save her, but she couldn't. She just blipped out of existence. And I use that term loosely, <laughs> no pun. So she was gone, and everyone was sad. And then the movie ended, and then uh, end credits saying, "You see Monica wake up in this hospital type thing, and it was all white." And then next thing you know, you see his her mother, who's not dead. She's alive, and she looks young, and you know, uh, you know, like not too much older than her, or maybe the same age. And then you hear someone else talking, and it's Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> Doing the beast again. I so, forgot he was a beast. <laughs> so he got him the beast again. Like, what are we like? How old is the beast? Like, we're going long in the tooth. Well, we also have Deadpool coming out, so we don't know if we're gonna kind of finish off the X Men as we as we used to know them. But we realized I was just like. I don't understand that the beast is here. What's Monica's mother doing here? Because they're talking about Xavier and all that. And she stands up and she's in the binary outfit. And binary was the other um, version of, of the Carol Danvers. And now her mother in this other reality is is binary, which is like that's where Carol Danvers became the powerhouse that we see her in this story. Because like Dave Cockerman, um, basically they were you know well no actually. They were trying to come up with another identity because they took Carol Danvers back after she lost. Well, uh, Chris Claremont was the one who could, took away her powers, so I can't say that the Avengers did. So he took away her powers. He was thinking about giving her new powers. 
And then since she had already been altered by the Kree, they're like, oh, her DNA, they mess with it, and she becomes binary, which is a superpower, like um, Silver Surfer power type character. So she's like like Phoenix level character without all of the the bad stuff hooked to it. And of course, they realize two seconds after bringing her in this book, she has to leave like, <laughs> like what was it? Maybe 10 issues later or the, uh, the seven issues later, she has to leave upset with the X-Men. So, but she's here and um, who that can that can get you into a lot of stuff that no no because she's with the who knows what we'll see in coming in the coming because they didn't we don't know what this is connected to it's going to be connected to we don't know what Captain Marvel's doing we got this X Men stuff so I say I, I like that they tied in binary but how do you tie in Captain Marvel well I mean I think it's coming more and more they're going to have the Secret Wars or the Battle World. And they're going to combine until they can bring it down. And, and I think Loki with all that stuff coming in. So we're not even touching that because that's a huge thing to discuss. But hey, other than that, what was your take on the movie overall? Fun. Fun. We had our issues with the dancing, but fun. Could have ended stronger, but still fun. And should people should still go out. Yeah, I think I'm a strong supporter. I think that um, the movie came out generally okay. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, and I think, hey, um, watch it. it I don't like I said I don't know why again let's also also factor in the fact that the pandemic people haven't gone back to the movies in the same levels they once did so you know if you can't catch it now catch it at home and uh, you know if you want to see these type of movies you got to support it all right we need a new hook with Spider-Man X-Men no that should have been the hook but we need something throughout the movie that's going to be a hook right so we had with um we had with Spider-Man, we had all three Spider-Mans. We had with Barbie, we had this big media campaign with Barbenheimer. We need to have something, you need to put out your marketing bucks with it. How do you put out your marketing bucks when you already spent and shelled and sit around 200 million for the movie? There's not much extra to keep going into the into the hole for to get that thing. But if you want to get to the bill, you're going to have to spend money. But at the same time, they don't want to. They're like... I spent a quarter of a billion bucks, bro. $250 million for the movie. So, I mean, and not counting, not counting the marketing. So, they spent a lot of money. So, I mean, we can't... we can't. It's not just money, but it's also how you utilize it. All right? Okay. The hard part is, and I understand, they don't want to do... They didn't want to have it where it's just another Guardians, but you got it, it's like another Guardians. <laughs> we got this team, but we're not a team, we're a team. So you got your girls movie, which everyone asked for, and then they didn't show up. So that to you, audience, that you said, why won't Marvel do the all girls thing? Well, you got the three leads, you got the female Valkyrie in there, and then you got the Hawk, Hawkeye girl at the end. So like, Go out there and, um, you know, check, you should have checked that out. But then if you come back and they say online six months later and it's on cable and they're like, this was good. I don't know why people didn't support. It's like, because you're watching it at home. Well, you can watch it at home, but you can but you can also buy. Universal's done a great job of doing movies, making tons of money. Because remember, they got to share the movie after a while here. They, they, when you're in a movie theater, I get they, they get the bulk of the money right away the first the week. It's a sliding scale. But the longer it stays in there, they got to share it. Whereas yeah. when it goes to, to, to streaming, they're getting the bulk of that, what, 80%, 70%, and it stays that way or 90% yeah. you know, consistently. They, they, it doesn't slide. Well, you don't have to share yeah. with anybody. You just go that's and go a, and that's a, Well, no, actually, you know, you still, they still, they still work on the, on the opening weekend budget. Yeah. So even though it's saying that's going to be, what do they say it's going to be? Forty-seven million. The yeah, one hundred ten over- million worldwide. Forty-seven million um, domestic, which also technically, even though they say domestic, it includes Canada. So you know, because we don't really <laughs> consider Canada separate. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, Spinarak. Um, is out. Out. 